had a staffer who came out and asking Twitter to literally take this down because it's being taken wrong by some people on the right. Though they want pretty much Twitter to do their dirty work. Uh, here to discuss this double standard from the media is our company. We have the author of Socialists Don't Sleep, Cheryl Chumley, and U.S. Strong Executive Director Aaron Elmore. Ladies, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I said this yesterday, but it actually hurts my brain a little bit. Just seeing how much the mainstream media has all of a sudden changed their tune. Uh, yesterday, we talked about how Muriel Bowser and many on the left calling what happened on Wednesday terrorism, uh, domestic terrorism, which it is. Um, yet, the quotes that they read were essentially, and the description that they read is exactly what happened this summer, but it wasn't called that. It feels like the media and the left has fueled this uh, double standard themselves, and now they want to you know, cry injustice, but they're the ones who essentially created this issue. Aaron? They've also created a massive double standard. It's really sad to watch what's going on. All of a sudden they say, but wait, a police officer is injured and hurt and possibly passed away. What happened to defunding the police and not having support for the police? All of a sudden they care about the police, which is a massive irony. And they're condemning and decrying violence when places like Philadelphia, where I am from, were virtually burned to the ground, businesses were looted, rioting occurred, people were scared to leave their homes. That happened in New York City. We had autonomous zones in Seattle, Minneapolis. We had the church outside of DC that was literally burned and desecrated. How are all of those acts of terrorism and violence acceptable? And this is not. They are all acts of political violence. And let's face it, political violence begets more political violence. And that's what happened on January 6th. Yeah. And, you know, Cheryl, it shouldn't be right should allow the left to try and paint the entire pro uh, pro Trump millions in America as violent thugs. We suspended President Trump um, from his Twitter account. Obviously, he went on a lockdown for 12 hours from them, and they have now indefinitely suspended him. This is coming in the likes of Facebook doing the same. You know, when I think about this, what we're talking about here, Aaron, with AOC literally calling on um, Twitter to do her dirty work and have tweets taken down that took her tweet the wrong way, essentially, it's almost like you have the left who is now has the reins on social media in some ways that they are able to steer them and control them and get what they want. Um, but it's interesting now, we have a sitting president who's literally been banned forever um, from social media. This is the kind of thing that happened in Nazi Germany or in Venezuela or communist Cuba or China. This is not American. Every American should be absolutely terrified by this. How the left just sits back and Michelle Obama gave a speech that this kind of behavior should continue. It is really scary and every American right, left or center should wake up and say, this is completely wrong. Right before we went on air, I don't know if this has been confirmed yet, the Apple store where you download your apps from your iPhone is um, gonna block Parler, which is you know the conservatives answer to Twitter. And if that occurs, my brain is just, is, is mush. Because what does that mean for conservative speech? That now our iPhones are censoring us? I mean, this is not America. We are really headed on a hegemonic decline as a country, and we are on our way to communism. You know, one of the most powerful things that we have in this country is freedom, freedom of speech. Appreciate you being here. We've got to keep a pulse on these stories. Uh, so we'll have to have you back soon. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, but before we go, just want to mention.